From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel this evening. In this video, I want to talk a few minutes about the treatment of pancreatic Cyst. You see, in the last video, we were talking about uh, the complications of uh, pancreatic cirrhosis, like uh, infection, rupture, hemorrhage. If any of those complications happen, the treatment is emergent because patient has the symptoms. So let us go like this: the treatment. Why are we treating the pancreatic pseudocyst? There are two principal indications. Number one, treating the symptoms. Whenever patient has symptoms, you need to treat it. Number two, preventing complications. So those are the principal indications for treating pancreatic pseudocyst. Okay? Number one, to improve symptoms. Number two, to prevent complications. So remember those things, folks. Those are the two principal indications, to improve symptoms and to prevent complications. So any treatment that you do should justify these two principal indications. Now the natural history of these lesions is more benign than previously thought. Now, don't get panicked immediately when you see pancreatic pseudocyst because many of the pancreatic pseudocysts can have a benign nature to it. So, there is time, like, uh, I mean, if the pancreatic pseudocyst is uh, small and if it is not causing symptoms, then you can give time, like uh, 6 to 12 weeks. Like for example, patient has pancreatitis, then you saw a pseudocyst, then expectant management is justifiable. In, I mean, in those first six to up to first six to twelve weeks of the existence of the cyst. So, in during that time, you need to monitor, and the chances are very high. I mean. Many of them, like up to 40% of them, can spontaneously go through resolution. So the spontaneous resolution is up to 40% of pancreatic cirrhosis. And so there is a high percentage of this cyst that could spontaneously resolve. So don't do all kinds of uh, stuff in that time, like catheters, surgery, and all that stuff, because they are not needed. So the expectant management has a role. I mean, in the absence of contraindications, you can do expectant management. Because most cysts can be promptly eliminated by resolution. Now, when you can't do it, like when the patient is uh, developing symptoms and the patient is developing complications, then you need to think about the treatment. The treatment based upon, uh, it depends on the location of the lesion and also it depends on the overall clinical status of the patient. If there is a symptomatic uh, pseudocyst and there is no history of recent acute pancreatitis, the patient can be treated without a delay. And for example, let me explain that well. The easiest thing to remember this is to go through a classification. Number one, external drainage. Number two, internal drainage. So, external drainage, internal drainage. The draining the pseudocyst, it usually relieves the obstruction. I mean, if a patient has, for example, uh, 
some jaundice due to obstruction. If you drain it, that relieves the obstruction and the patient feels better. So external drainage, internal drainage and the third treatment is excision. For example, the pseudocyst is in the tail of the pancreas, then you can excise it. Especially a post-traumatic pancreatic pseudocyst, when the body and the head of the pancreas are normal, then you can just excise it. So the external drainage, internal drainage, excision, those are the most common treatment. Let us talk about external drainage. External drainage is good when the, um, when, when the, for example, if the cyst has the walls and the walls are reliable, you take a large tube and you go through the cyst and one end is brought out through the abdominal wall and the external drainage happens. But external drainage, it can leave a fistula. That's an important point there. A patient treated with uh, external drainage can have a fistula as a complication. The other important point is the incidence of recurrent cirrhosis is about four times greater after external drainage than after drainage in the, into the gut. So the incidence of a recurrent pancreatic pseudocyst is four times, remember that point, is four times greater after external drainage than after internal drainage, like uh, drainage into the gut. Now, internal drainage, that is the preferred method of treatment. So the preferred method is internal drainage because the cyst is anastomosed by a rho E Y. Uh, you, you know the process of cystoge jejunostomy. When you connect, you can connect the cyst to the jejunum. You can connect through to the stomach like cystogastrostomy. You can connect it to the duodenum through cystodiodenostomy. So the interior of the cyst can be connected to the gastrointestinal cavity. That's a treatment, folks. But you should always examine the wall because sometimes there will be dormant tumors. So you should always check the wall and make sure there is no cancer. Then you do the other stuff, like a cystro. Uh, gastrostomy, cystojejunostomy, cystodiodinostomy. Basically, you are saying from the cyst to the stomach, from the cyst to the duodenum, from the cyst to the jejunum. So that is uh, the technical name, rho E and Y, cystojejunostomy. So those are the most common methods we use in the internal drainage. So the cystodiodinostomy, when the cyst is deep within the head like just adjacent to the duodenum, you need to do the sister duodenostomy. And if it is just behind, like uh, just behind the stomach, sister gastrostomy. It's adjacent to the jejunum, sister jejunostomy. Simple folks, very easy to remember. So the internal drainage is done based on the location, based on the proximity of the cyst to the other uh, parts of the gastrointestinal tract. And following internal drainage, the cyst cavity becomes obliterated within a few weeks because all the fluid is gone and the fibrosis happens and the cavity just disappears. And many patients actually go back to their regular lifestyle within a few weeks after the surgery. And you take x-rays and uh, you may see a small residue in the cyst, but it also disappears with time. There are non-surgical techniques like a percutaneous catheter. You take a catheter, you place it in the cyst under radiographic or ultrasound guidance. So the, you send the catheter into the cyst. And this could be the preferred method for uh, infected pseudocysts. Or in some centers, many in surgical centers across the United States, 
when there is a majority, I mean they do a simple percutaneous procedure and most of them resolve and they are permanently gone and that is a very popular method nowadays. So they do a percutaneous catheter drainage. That is also an important point, folks. Percutaneous catheter drainage. Because it is uh, technically much easier than doing a big surgery. And many surgeons take chances by first doing a percutaneous catheter drainage. When the cyst fluid is like sterile, I mean, you don't even have to worry about uh, infection. But this procedure can be a risk factor for turning a pancreatic pseudocyst into pancreatic abscess. So all these uh, percutaneous procedures can cause infection and the other complication is they can leave a fistula and that's another headache. You have to worry about uh, removing the fistula. There are other treatments like uh, passing a catheter percutaneously through the anterior abdominal wall, then the anterior wall of the stomach, then the posterior wall of the stomach and into the cyst. So you, you send a direct catheter across all the different layers of the abdomen directly into the cyst. That is also one of the uh, recent developments. You remove the uh, catheter and then the fistula forms between the cyst and the stomach. The other uh, treatment is uh, using a gastroscope. Using a gastroscope you go into the stomach and from there you make a small tear in the posterior uh, gastric wall directly into the pseudocyst and you drain the pseudocyst. That's another method but because of the safety and efficacy not many people are using those uh, things because, as I said, uh, they have uh, those complications. So, what you should remember in this discussion is excision, you can remove if the pancreatic pseudocyst is in the tail, internal drainage, external drainage. External drainage, the problem is the recurrence of the cyst is four times higher. Internal drainage is the preferred method. So those are the most important points about treatment of the pancreatic uh, pseudocyst. Hopefully that helped you a little bit. And if you have any important points, please feel free to post on our website. Thank you. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.